I was a huge Walking Dead fan, and by that I mean dead people who shambled around uh, since I was a little kid reading Creepy Magazine and, and seeing like the occasional like white zombie or something. I always thought uh, zombies were very sad, uh, you know, little monsters. But there was nothing, you know, they had no star power until Night of the Living Dead and George Romero. I saw that movie in 1971, I think. It had been out for a couple of years. It, it showed at a small theater in, in Washington, D.C. And a couple of friends of mine, I was in the summer between 8th and ninth grade, a couple of friends of mine said, you got to see this movie. It's incredible. It's the scariest thing in the world. And they actually eat people. I had my first LSD flashback halfway through the film, so right at the point where Tom is nailing up the window and the hand comes through and grabs him, bing, I thought I was watching a documentary for the rest of the film. It, it, it's so completely imprinted on my central nervous system that um, um, I was never quite the same. That was the first time that anything like that had happened where uh, all of a sudden the movie I was watching uh, emotionally kind of translated into real life. The short answer is the movie really knocked me out and it was exactly the kind of stuff that I wanted to see and came to realize I wanted to do. Fast forward a couple of years to late 86, early 87, get a phone call from George Romero who wanted to make a film version of my first novel, The Light at the End, which I wrote with this guy named Craig Spector. And, um, so we're talking to George Romero on the phone in a three-way phone conversation. Craig was into it, but I was going nuts. I mean, this guy was one of my heroes. So um, we're talking, and all of a sudden, I go, I get this flash. I go, George, um, we've been meeting all these great horror writers, uh, King and Scow and Lansdale and all these other characters, McCammon. Um, and a lot of them really love your movies, love them almost as much as like me. So what if we got uh, a bunch of these guys uh, and did an anthology where they wrote stories set in your universe, basically? And George says, well, I don't believe anybody would be that interested, um, but I'll tell you what, as long as you don't use any scenes or characters from the movies, then uh, my business partner won't sue your asses and everything will be uh, you know, fine, I don't see there could be any objection. I just don't believe you'll be able to pull it off. And if you do, I will eat my hat. So um, basically started getting a hold of all these writers and all of them said yes. You know, everybody wanted to do it. Stephen King, two weeks later, sends me a postcard saying the story's almost done, you ready to see it? I'm like, oh yeah. Um, he was the first one in the door, the story called Home Delivery. And immediately thereafter, David Scow and several other people started just great story after great story after great story until we had 16 of these things. Up until that time, there was no zombie literature. There was no post-Romero contemporary zombie literature at all. Uh, the only things that you could find were the novelizations of his two movies up to that point. And, um, and they were not very good. <laughs> but to approach it as serious writing had never happened before. And so we opened that door. Now, it's huge. Uh, a lot of it has to do with Max Brooks and his phenomenal World War Z, which I really, really, really think is probably the best zombie novel I've ever read. Then you have high-end stuff like uh, Kirkman's Walking Dead uh, graphic novels, which are, of course, now being turned into the TV series. And uh, anthologists have started to... Uh, try to galvanize the literary end, and I mean like the actual literary quality writing end of it again, um, which was why it was so cool that uh, Black Dog and Leventhal, this publisher, contacted me last year and said, uh, you have a month, can you pull together an ultimate zombie anthology and explain what zombies are all about and give us like the greatest zombie stories in the world? And I said, yes. Zombies Encounters with the Hungry Dead was the, the name of the book. I really, really love this book a lot. It has a bunch of the stuff from Book of the Dead and Still Dead and Mondo Zombie, which were the three previous zombie anthologies that I did because I kind of felt like I'd already picked a bunch of the best stories and then I had to pick like the best of those. Um, had to wrestle with this publisher. There were a couple of stories that were too hardcore for them 
to handle, and that's saying a lot when you consider what's actually in there. There's one story in particular called A Bed by Elizabeth Massey that is the goddamnedest, most horrifying zombie story ever written, and it freaked them out so bad that they would not let me publish it. Living Dead 2 uh, has some great new stuff in it, uh, including a piece that uh, Cody Goodfellow and I did that I'm really proud of called The Price of a Slice. Zombies are now at the point where uh, if you keep telling the same story over and over, it's going to be just such diminishing returns. It, uh, it, it's gotten to the point that a lot of people think zombies are mostly about, okay, civilization has collapsed. It, it's like an ultimate libertarian wet dream where you get to shoot everybody that doesn't agree with you and you were right all the time. And, uh, you know, and they just won't leave you alone. And, um, yeah, I think that that particular story is getting real old and we're going to have to find new ways to approach this stuff. That said, there are so many ways to play this stuff and you have to give the culture the creative freedom uh, to, to play with it in any way it wants to, even if that means fucking it up a lot. So one of the reinventions uh, that Cody and I did with the zombie mythos is this book called Spore. It's going to come out as an ebook in November, and then a couple months later, it's going to come out uh, as a trade paper. But it involves um, the sentient fungus that lives under uh, the LA prison system, is growing up, uh, getting consumed by people who then spread it by cutting it into the city's cocaine supply. So it's basically you're snorting this directly into your brain where it takes over and zombifies you uh, in a very happy way. You're, you're, you, know, you're, you may be The Walking Dead, but you're really high and you can't wait to spread this joy to everybody else. And uh, it also involves that, uh, that weird fungoid parasite reaction you may have heard about uh, where a fungus gets into an ant it gets into its brain, it makes it climb as high as it can go, and when it can go no higher, it stays there until the fungus blows out of its head, and then uh, the wind carries the spores out uh, into the world, and that's how it spreads. That's uh, part of the inspiration for spore. So yeah, we have these happy, coked out uh, Los Angeles zombies, and we, we just blow the shit out of Los Angeles. All goes down in one day, it's got, a, I think, a 240 page long car chase um, this book is really insane and uh, all takes place on Thanksgiving and it's a love story. So um, that baby's got it all is what I'm trying to say.